Hi again. So one of the things that uh, we try to do when we draw is to focus our minds, to quiet them down, to slow down, and to stop that part of our brain which is forever analyzing all the information that's coming in. It's as if there's a sort of little computer in our brain that's taking all the data that's flowing in from our eyeballs and saying, oh, I know what that is. Let's put that over here. Let's look at this. Let's analyze that. And instead, the drawing part of our brain needs to just look at what is. What is really there? What does it really look like? How does it intersect the shapes around it? And so that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to do an exercise that uses an approach that's called negative space. Negative space means looking at the space between objects, the shapes between things. For instance, if you look right now at this image of me, you can see the shape of the ceiling above me, right? And that shape, there isn't really a word for what that shape is. It's not a square, it's not a parallelogram. It's sort of, um, I don't know, you could put a name to it, but let's not. Let's just look at that shape, that gray, and see how it intersects what little hair I have, um, how it comes down where it meets the edges of the cupboards, how it hits the top of the light fixture. And you could just look at that shape and isolate it, right? And that would be a piece of negative space. Uh, another example of negative space is if you were looking at a landscape and you're looking at some buildings on the horizon and you just decided to draw the sky behind them. Not the buildings yet, just the sky. And again, the reason to do that is because it's a shape that's unfamiliar that we don't have a name for, right? If I asked you to draw the shape of the sky, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have a, a label, um, you know, a symbol for that. And so that's really helpful for us because A, it slows our brain down and forces us to look at what really is there to figure out the dimensions of it. But also, once we put that shape into our drawing, it can help us to identify and locate other shapes in the landscape. So for instance, if we were going to draw this sky, we might then know more specifically where the different buildings were and how they intersected it without starting by drawing the buildings. Because when we start by drawing the buildings, again, we're going into this land of preconceived ideas. So what I want to do is I want to go back to our breakfast again. We drew the, the mugs, and now we're going to make a slightly more complicated scene. And I want to create a little sort of still life of random stuff, and I want to make it so that it has interesting shapes that are falling between the objects. So what we're going to be drawing is not the objects themselves, but we're going to be drawing the table behind them. Ideally, that table would be kind of a flat surface. Don't take some kind of complicated tablecloth and draw that. But just have a bunch of different objects that have inter interesting shapes, the way they stick in. So here's my landscape, my uh, little uh, still life. And you can see that there are, it's sort of an unappetizing breakfast perhaps, but, but I kind of created it in order to show you the shapes. So there's the shape of, the, of space between the four times the shapes the shape that ends at the edge of the uh, napkin the curve of the plate is then bisected by another object so so what we want to do is we want to take this landscape and we want to just draw the table so here's an example of my identifying each of these individual shapes so you can see there's a half dozen or so shapes and now let's just isolate those shapes and look at just them. You see how that shape is. Um, and then if we color that shape in, you can see that it really helps us to understand that scene. We can see the objects even though we're not really drawing them. We're just drawing what's around them. And this, again, will help us to kind of quiet our brains down. It'll help us to draw things based entirely on what we're seeing versus what we're making up and it will help us to plot out the, the, the landscape of what we're going to draw before we go in and draw the details. So uh, the next step that we could take with this kind of exercise is we could then go in and now we would know where the cup is in relation to, to the plate, where the coffee um, maker is in relationship to the salt cellar. We would see all those different relationships because 
and draw the table between them. Okay, so let's give that a try and see how that comes out.